Hey everyone, Ray Sawville, RaySawville.com. In today's video, we are going to be going through campaign settings and why they are so important for your account. I get it, campaign settings aren't the most sexy setting that you can kind of set around in your account, but if you do this correctly, you're going to ensure that things are set up properly and that you're not having any waste within your account. Um, there are several ways that you can do this that I'm going to show you within this video. One of them is going to be in the interface and the other being in AdWords editor, so that'll be the other option. Uh, but let's just head right into the interface. So if, if you go to Google Ads for any of your campaigns and you select either all campaigns, search campaigns, what have you, on the left-hand menu, you're going to see campaign settings. I'm going to click on one of my campaigns that I have paused right now, which is a DSA campaign, which I, I'll have a link somewhere on the screen if you don't know what DSAs are. Make sure you learn and see what they do. Uh, but campaign settings are so important because if one thing is not set properly here, you can spend lots and lots of dollars without knowing exactly where that money is going and it can be easily avoided. So um, something like a campaign checklist, optimization checklist, I'll have something somewhere down the line that'll kind of go through that in more detail. Uh, but, but we're just gonna go through all these campaign settings right now to ensure that you are not wasting money. Um, so pretty much all of these settings up until networks is something that you can leave by default. You have your campaign name, the goal. Um, Goal, you can put this into here if you want. Um, this will kind of give you recommendations to increase your Opti score. If you don't know what that means, you don't have to worry about this section too much right now. You're okay leaving this with no goal guidance for now. Um, but the first major setting that we are going to look at here is networks. And if you are running a search campaign, there's two major buckets here. You've got the search network and you've got the display network. Now, Typically, these campaigns, these options are enabled by default with search partners and Google Display Network. I typically like to run campaigns with both of these options off so I can run a pure search campaigns to start. Um, down the line, if you do check both of these options, you are able to segment campaigns by these intents. But if you're not exactly sure how your niche is going to perform, you can start with these settings off and you can always turn them on later. Typically, when you enable these settings, it's going to give you more inventory. And depending on the bidding um, strategy that, that, that you're using, it may work for you, it may not. I've seen it go both ways. So just something to keep in, in mind when you're setting up your campaigns. Definitely keep an eye on the search network and display network. It's just going to give you more placements on different um, sections. So like... Search partners is any any um, website that'll have the Google search on it or search results on it. So um, they kind of give you examples like this. So if a website uses Google search engine, um, they then have the option to see a bid. Display network are banner ads, display ads that you see all over the place. So you do have the option to have your search ads show up in this context. Again, my recommendation is to leave both these settings off right away. Tinker down the line for more inventory if you would like to test. The next option is locations. Um, I, I don't want to go into too much about where you're targeting. Um, that, that could be a whole option. But the big thing that we want to go through here is location options. And here's where it gets interesting. The targeting settings that you set up in your account go based, it'll default based on presence or interest. Meaning, let's say you're a attorney in Milwaukee, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and you have somebody searching for best lawyer in Milwaukee. If you're in, if Google thinks you have high interest in that search term specifically, you are then eligible to serve. So typically in instances like that, yes, even though someone might be interested traveling in a different state, for in like um, Florida, for example, if they search for best lawyer in Milwaukee, you may want to serve that audience, but you may not, it may have a different intent than somebody that's searching in the state. So by you choosing presence or interest, it's going to ensure that you're going to have more inventory options and Google is just going to serve if it thinks that your user is has some type of interest in your term regardless of their location. So this just kind of expands things greatly. Um, presence means they're just literally in your location and then interest is they're just showing interest in your location. So by default, it's doing both. I like to leave this enabled if you're doing smart bidding because Google's just going to be able to choose it. 
But if you are not using smart bidding, I typically like to go with presence. Um, one of the major reasons why doing presence or interest and why it works so well on smart bidding, Google's able to take in all those real-time bidding factors in the presence and or interest section and bid effectively. If it's if you're relying on making the changes to do this, you could probably get somewhere closer. But in my experience, um, you probably want to go with presence if you don't have smart bidding enabled. Um, so, so like I said, typically I like to enable this section if I'm using smart bidding. And then the same thing goes for exclusions. Now, one thing that I want to show you guys here um, in how to see where those users are firing um, in, in case you're auditing an account. If you click on the more section down here at the bottom and you go to locations, you can actually see the um, locations where ads are firing. So let me do all time here to show you what this kind of looks like. Um, but you can choose targeted locations or matched locations. So targeted locations are literally saying, hey, I am targeting the state of Wisconsin. I want to see everything there. Matched locations is going to show you all of that interest piece. So it's showing you, hey, even though somebody is in Brazil, they matched because Google thought you had an interest in that piece. So somewhere down the line, you may want to audit your location section when selecting this um, presence or interest option. So that might give you a decent idea of how things are performing and you can begin to audit things based on people's physical location. The next section we are going to be going through is bidding. I'm gonna, again, there's another, there's a completely different video regarding bidding strategies. The link will be down below in the description. Make sure to check that out because honestly that deserves its own topic. Um, and then the last couple sections here that I want to go through are conversion sections. So if you have conversion tracking set up in your account, you can tell that specific campaign if you're using smart bidding to optimize for one conversion type. So if you have leads for one option and e-commerce conversion for another section, you can have campaigns specifically optimized for one of those two or both. So you can say this campaign should only optimize for e-commerce conversion. This campaign should optimize for leads. It works really well when you have blended um, signals and you have blended goals. So you can say here are, here's my mixed ROAS and, and, and here's how that blended approach works. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, the, the last section I want to go through here is ad rotation. Um, doing optimized perform best performing ads will, in my experience, always work and typically lead to higher click-through rates. This is even if you're not doing smart bidding. Um, back in the day, doing things like um, rotate indefinitely used to be the very clean way to do A versus B testing right away because you would say, hey, this ad versus this ad. Let's see what wins. Let's have them duke it out and see what wins. Um, nowadays, with responsive search ads and different ad types, that doesn't work as well because you're already drinking the Google Kool-Aid saying, I want to try this best ad and see how it works. So my recommendation is to always stick with best performing ads here. Um, there are also account options that I showcased on the previous screen as well, um, which I'll make sure to go through some of these account settings rather quickly as well. Um, but for the most part, you're always going to want to have auto tagging turned on within your account. By default, when somebody visits your website, what that means is that something called a GCLID is going to be appended to all of your URLs. And what this GCLID does, that is the auto tagging piece, and it ensures that within Google Analytics, all of your data will be passed through properly and attributed to the proper campaign and all that kind of fun stuff. So when somebody then goes to the website and the GCLID here is enabled, it's automatically, um, I did my UTMs wrong, it's automatically going to um, assign that to the appropriate campaign. So keep that in mind when you have auto tagging turned on because this is the number one way to make sure that you're tracking things properly from Google Ads to Google Analytics. Um, call reporting is also fine. I like to leave that enabled so you can see how phone calls are performing if you have call extensions enabled in your account. Um, the inventory type is more so for display and video campaigns. You can say how aggressive you want to be with your inventory types. Um, depending on the niche, I like to go to expanded or standard. Again, it depends on how much you're leaning into smart bidding. If, you're, if smart bidding is just dominating your account, expanded tends to work pretty well. Uh, but for the most part, standard inventory is the way to go for your account. Um, and then there's just a bunch of other things that you can set in here as well. So things like ad suggestions. Um, this is a big one. I like to not have my ad show up in here because in my experience, ad suggestions never are great. <laughs> and they haven't been since they've been introduced. So Google, one thing you should keep an eye on. Um, but that is one thing that you should keep in mind when optimizing campaign settings taking a look at the individual campaign settings um, along with account settings as well is huge. 
the, the last piece here that I want to go through is how to do this with an editor. The biggest thing that you can do here in Google Ads Editor is you can apply multiple campaign changes at once. So if you select all of your campaigns here, you can change a majority of your campaign settings on the fly. So if I want all these to say never include search partners, never include display network, you can just select a you know variety of campaign options at once instead of having to go campaign by campaign by campaign. So make sure to use those different tools to your advantage. Um, I do have a separate video on the channel, which will be down below in the description regarding Google Ads Editor. This tool is a must if you're working with many different campaigns and you want to duplicate and move around quickly um, on the fly for Google Ads campaigns. Um, but yeah, I mean, when it comes to campaign settings, there's a lot to it. There are ways to make sure that your campaigns are running efficiently and you're not throwing money out the window because trust me, I've done it. It's not fun. There are ways to make sure things are running effectively. So um, if you have any questions, let, make sure to let me know below within the comments. If you did like the video, please consider subscribing. It'll make sure that YouTube shares the video with people that are just like you. So I would find that, I, I would I would be very grateful if you did that. So um, appreciate the time. Until next time, we'll see you guys later. Thanks. Bye.